today's video is things I changed my mind about harness um, harness halters things like that it is super windy today I was gonna haul stuff in the house and do it but there's quite a bit of stuff so I decided to try it out here hopefully the wind doesn't make it so you can't hear um, and it's cold so I have <laughs> my hat in here um, it's just so cold out here but anyway the things I changed my mind about I'm gonna share a little bit about the collar and Hames when I had our collar maker make some changes to the collar, there was a little bit of feedback from people about why I changed something that's worked perfectly for so long. Um, I don't know what I'm talking about because I haven't been doing it very long, so how would I know better than people who've been doing it for hundreds of years? Certainly, I agree. Uh, people who've been doing it for hundreds of years probably do know, and the people who did it every day were much more uh, you know, adept at all this than somebody who does it for fun and drives a Shetland pony. So I get that. But what I found out through driving Zorro, is he was getting really sore on the front of his shoulder right here. And there were two distinct places that would get puffy and um, sort of the touch. And I would consider that bruising for a pony. When I would bring him home from like a sledding drive or doing something with the collar and hames, Sky would lick him and lick him and lick him in these two places. And he always had these big wet patches where she was constantly licking. That's pretty uncommon that another pony would do that to a pony. I mean, that really shows you that there was something wrong. She was definitely trying to help alleviate something that was hurting him. And what I discovered through trial and error was, so the collars, the collared hands are stiff, of course. They're supposed to be to help with the low line of draft, so there's no collapsing. But they are shaped, see this shape right here, this rocker, I call this a rocker. I'm sure it's not a technical term. Um, again, I drive a Shetland pony and do this for fun, so bear with me here. But this is exactly where she would lick and lick and lick was right where this hits on his shoulder um this one is a coblins collar it's a beautiful collar i mean look at how pretty it is it's it's beautifully made i really love their their collars um but it is it's quite a big protuberance right here now on a big horse um a big size horse they have their neck and then it sort of usually divots in and then there's their shoulder right like they're very um they have a lot of more curves than a pony or, sh or a mini does or a donkey when you look at a pony or mini or donkey they're very flat their neck is flat flat back to their shoulder there's really no big divot between the shoulder and the neck unless they're obese um then they might have that but that's not ideal actually of course but what i did was i contacted um our collar maker and i said can you make can you put less straw in for one so this is not rock hard it's hard it's stiff but it doesn't feel like a rock and there's a little bit of movement to it you can see that and i said can you make this back part that lays against their neck flat so see that see how this one has this point right here and this one is flat so that is what i asked them to change this part because the minis and the shetlands and stuff with that flat neck this needs to lay flat on their neck to have it have a, a rocker and then press into the flat part of their neck because it can't fit in there correctly was what my issue was with Zorro. I'm not saying everybody in the world is going to have the same issue. Maybe people's ponies do fine with this Coblins collar with the big rocker. Mine didn't. So I asked to have this done. Um, so that's that. And then this is the all purpose one from Broadhead that he changed as well. You can see how flat it is on the back. So here's the one from Coblins. Hopefully you can see that. Hopefully it's in focus. But it's pretty obvious that this is much pointier than this one is. So that is one thing I changed my mind about. Um, I wanted to do what everybody else was saying was the best thing to do, which was the Coblins collars for the minis. And in my case, that just didn't end up being true. So I just sort of have to roll with the punches. Zorro's very clear about things. And um, it was clear there was something going on when Skye was constantly licking him when we came back from driving with the Coblins collar. So. That is what drove that change. Now on to the next thing. I used to always really like these knockoff bits. They, they're like a knockoff from the Myler Comfort Snaffle um, style bit with the roller. But what I found is on a lot of your really smaller minis, 
um, not so much sorrel, but like the smaller minis. This cheek is giant, and it doesn't matter if you have a four inch or a three and a half inch, the cheek is the same size. It's just a giant cheek. And I know on like Molly's little mare, Goldie, she's a 31 inch, tiny, petite, very Arabian looking little tiny mini. This cheek takes up her whole side of her face, and, and then this drops well down below her chin. Um, I just prefer the cheek of the Bowman bit. The Bowman style. Um, it, you can see how much smaller it is. It's just insane how much smaller it is for the half cheek style. Um, and then their Boucher cheek, which I don't have one right here with the purchase on it, which is similar to this style, um, is also much smaller. It's basically this size with a little purchase on top. So I just like that better for your littler minis. Um, and then I, I'm not a big fan of the uh, roller mouth anymore. I don't have perfect enough hands to have a bit like this in my pony's mouth and keep my pony from wanting to fall in or out on one side or the other with his shoulders because I I try and I practice, but I don't always weight my lines the same. And so I don't wanna be interfering any more than, than I do just because I'm there. When the, each side moves independently, it doesn't um, at all help the pony when the driver isn't perfect. So unless you have perfect hands, and there are trainers out there that, that are just, I mean, just golden with how they handle their lines, this bit would work per great for a lot of ponies. Um, for Zorro, it just does, he, he's fine. He does fine in it now. It's less about the bit for him because now he understands when I connect with his bit, I'm actually talking to his feet. For the longest time, he thought the bit was just about the bit and about his mouth and he should bite it and pull on it and you know because he had no idea that when I was asking for him to slow down or change something with my lines it meant his feet so that took a year to <laughs> for me to teach him because I'm slow at teaching that kind of thing um that was a learning curve for me <laughs> it took a long time but when he finally connected the lines to his feet then the bit mattered far less but I just tend to not want to do anything that's going to cause him to be crooked at all he has enough skeletal issues, you know, just from the way that his confirmation is, I don't need to be adding to them with all my, my crookedness and my weirdness. So that's another thing. Another thing I changed my mind about was driving lines. Um, I have for years preferred leather lines over really any other line. And I had the most beautiful set of leather lines that were padded um, sewn with like glove leather where your hands were um, padded and so they were a little bit thicker which was nice for my hands. I have um, carpal tunnel quite badly and tennis elbow from a job I used to work at Gibson Guitar and I was in the finishing department and I would clean the binding of paint. So the binding that's supposed to be white would get painted over during the process of the building of the, bike, or of the guitar and so you take a little glass slide that's broken half and then you clean all the paint off the binding and I did many guitars in a day and it just added up over time to where I ended up having horrible carpal tunnel really bad tennis elbow so that interferes with my grip not that you want to be gripping the lines that hard but if the lines are too small or too thin they just make my hands uh, fall asleep like my fingers get tingly so I liked those leather lines. I used those for years. Then Zorro, uh, Mr. Sensitive, uh, showed me that I wasn't perfect enough in my line handling to use leather lines. They're too immediate, they're too fast. I was too fast with my hands. And so I was told by one of my horsemanship instructors that he was always told, if you're gonna use leather reins, you better have perfect hands. Well, I didn't have perfect hands, so I went to yacht rope driving lines, and I love them. I love them for many reasons. Um, one of them is that they're really comfortable in my hand. This is a little different yacht rope than Chimicum cells, but um, I really like this rope. So <laughs> I've been trying different kinds of rope to see what, what I like the best, and there'll be some little announcements coming up soon, but my husband and I are gonna be making driving lines. So that's kind of fun, in colors. So I'm really excited. But anyway, I really like this size. This is considered 3 8 but it's just a little bit bigger than the 3 8 from um, Chimicum. And it's really soft and it's nice. When you have to sit on it, you don't even notice that you're sitting on it. Um, so like I use 11 foot lines with my K-Bike. 
So of course they're gonna be a little long. I just sit on them. I pull them under the front of my thigh like so and they go out the back of my seat and then they go to the horse and I just sit on them like that. They don't get near the wheel that way. Nothing can step on them. They don't drag. I make sure they're not dragging. But then if I need to get out of my bike to open a gate, do something, I'm not, I'm not stuck with six foot or four foot lines on my K-bike right up by Zorro so that I can't reach anything. Or if the trail gets really bad and I have to get off the bike and do a little walking, I can be behind the bike because my lines are long enough to get behind the bike. I don't have to try to also be beside Zorro on a super narrow rocky trail. Um, if you've ever had to do that, you know what I'm talking about. So anyway, I really love yacht rope lines and now I probably will never go back. Even if I get my hands perfect, I'm sticking with yacht rope lines. They can drag in the dirt, they go in the creeks and they get in the mud and it, and they just look fine when you get home, you know, you just brush them off basically. Um, the fun thing that we're doing with this, this kind of line is we're making this slide. This line slides in and out of the keeper. So you can just slide it onto your bit, slide it off your bit. You don't need any adapters or anything. So that's yet to come. We're really close to getting those to where we're just making them so I can sell them. So I'm very excited. So another thing I've changed my mind about is halters. Um, <clears throat> I've never really understood the throat latch snap. For a long time, I just thought it was kind of, well, you know, whatever. I don't know why somebody wouldn't just unbuckle it and put it on and buckle it. What's the big deal? But then um, I ended up, I think it was this halter came with the throat latch snap or I picked it out that way off the wall or something. And I just always buckled it and unbuckled it. And then one day, I don't know what I was doing, but it was cold, it was windy. And I just did this and pulled it off. And I was like, well, that was pretty easy. I kind of liked that. So then I started putting it on him with the throat latch snap undone and just having to snap that up. And that was easy too. And then for Oliver, um, I thought, well, that would be a good way to kind of get him started for bridling because you have to bring that up over the ears, you know, the same as, as you do with this, with the throat snap. So um, he's learned to put his nose into the hole and then he just keeps his head down and I can just slide it up over his ears and snap it. And voila, it's good to go. And so I am totally a convert now. My halters all have throat latch snaps. So that's another thing I changed my mind about. So I used to just hang my harnesses directly on the hooks when they were stored in here. Um, and then I would put them in the harness bag for travel. But you know what? It's just so much easier to have them always in the harness bag that now they all, all my harnesses go in their bag and then hang on the hook in the shed. Um, and they stay cleaner. My shed doesn't get very dusty, actually. My husband did a really good job with this, but um, it's just nice to have them contained in here. And then I know when I grab this bag, everything that Zorro needs is in here. Um, and this one is Oliver's. So his little harness set up here is all ready to go. And Hopefully the weather will start to cooperate soon and I can do a video on actually fitting a harness to a young pony and it will be his harness, not the horse harness. So that will be kind of fun to do. Um, but anyway, that was another thing I changed my mind about is even when they're in my tax shed, they're in a harness bag. This, this isn't really something I changed my mind about, but it is something new I'm doing. So I got this alligator clip stainless steel alligator clip I think it's called for my um, turn back strap so it clips to the back of the saddle and then this is the strap that goes down to the britching and the crouper um, to see to see you know how that works people like it for safety one thing I don't love is it does allow my turn back strap to go crooked and it wants to kind of ride crooked um, and that I'm just OCD and that drives me crazy so I don't know if that's something I'll continue to keep using, but it is something that I have changed on my harness. This is not something I've recently changed my mind about, but this turn back strap on my trail harness, I use the pleasure style. And the reason for that is because I like the fact that the hip straps are sewn together. See that? Um, they're also sewn in like a, a little arc so that they follow the top of the hip in a really nice arc and then they come down and go to two straps for the um, up tugs on the britching and I prefer turn back strap to have 
this sewn together and not be two straps. I found with Zorro's confirmation, he has kind of, he's a little bit butt high, um, that those two, when that was two straps, they rubbed really bad and they would create broken hairs on the top of his hip. And I knew over time that was going to cause trouble because that's a pressure point that I was, you know, I could see it happening. So I switched over to this hip strap and I've been happy ever since. And Nelson did do upgrades. So he did, we used to have rings on these and then you couldn't slide them in and out. And he changed that. He took the ring off and then there's two loops. See that? So you can have it back here for like a donkey or you can have it up here for a pony without having to make this super short. Um, or it, you'll have this, like this is really short. You can see on Zorro, he's very short bodied. Um, and so this strap is very short, but I still have to have it on the forward loop to get that hip strap up over his hip correctly. The fact that Zorro is super short bodied is partly why it was very hard for me to get the hyperbike to balance correctly. Um, a lot of your 40 inch ponies can be 43 to 44 inches long from point of hip to point of shoulder. Zorro is 40 inches tall and 40 inches long. and I know it sounds crazy, but that two inches makes a huge difference in balancing because literally my K-bike shafts are three inches shorter than my hyperbike shafts were and they balance perfectly. So when you're talking about ponies and minis, inches mean everything. I mean, it's similar to when you trim their feet and you take off, if you took off a half inch on a mini foot or a Shetland foot, that's huge. That's a lot of their hoof. If you took off that much on a big horse, that's probably a normal trim. You see what I'm saying? If you add two inches to a shaft link on a big horse, you wouldn't even notice the difference at all, not whatsoever. But when you add or subtract two or three inches on a shaft link with a pony or a mini, it can be the thing that makes the vehicle work correctly. That's why when people contact me about balancing issues with every vehicle, every mini Shetland pony vehicle, it's almost always the shafts and it's almost always the length of them and also where they have the pony in the shaft. Balance is a tricky thing and it's just something we have to work on every drive all the time if we have a two-wheeled cart. We always have to make adjustments for if the cart is working today or not. And sometimes it's because, oh, we drove a different vehicle and we dropped our shaft loops down or we had to raise them up really high and then we forgot and now we're on our other vehicle and it's not working. What the heck is going on? Well, try lowering your shaft loops. Try raising them. Try tightening your overgirth or loosening it a little bit. Try tightening your holdback straps or maybe unwrap them one wrap and see if that helps if he's too tight in the shafts. Hopefully your shafts adjust to be wider and narrower. And so adjust that. Um, it's kind of interesting on the K-bike anyway, the way the bend is, the narrower you have them, the lower the shafts are. So then you have to drop your shaft loops. The wider you have them, the higher you can have your shaft loops. Keep in mind though, if you have them too wide, then you have that shaft loop sticking out from the saddle and you have constant downward pressure on the saddle. So you have, there's a, there is a happy place, the perfect sweet spot for those shafts to sit where the shaft loops hang straight. There's no bouncing. There's no jamming up and down, which is bouncing. Everything just rides perfect. They're level all the time. They just slide forward and back beautifully. And you have almost zero movement in your shaft. So your feet and your stirrups are pretty still. It's actually, really cool and super amazing how well balanced it is. Um, I'm blown away every time I drive it. So these things aren't cut in stone. Life is fluid. Ponies are fluid. They change. Um, you're not going to get one girth that's going to fit your pony year round. <laughs> Sorry. They don't adjust well enough for that. And you're going to need two girths at least. Zorro has three. Um, there's just gonna be things that you need to adjust and change to fix your balance on different drives. Maybe the horse got a little chubby, so your shafts are a little narrow and you have to widen them, which means you're gonna have to adjust your balance a little bit. That's gonna change how things are balancing. That's the name of the game. So you're not, it's not one size fits all. It's not one time you hitch them, it's perfect and it's perfect forever. I wish, <laughs> but that's just not how it works. Um, you're gonna, it's just a constant adjustment and a constant balance and a constant fluidity. And that's life for you too. I mean, just like I talked in the last video with nutrition, the ponies themselves tell me what is necessary for each pony. They're individuals. They all need something different. It's the same with this. You know, I can start with the same setup that I have for Zorro or I like with Sky. I started with what we showed her with and it wasn't working or functioning correctly for where I live at all. The harness was too narrow, too small. The saddle wasn't right. Nothing fitter 
really. Um, as she got older, she changed shape. They do that, and it just wasn't working, so I had to go with something different. Um, and that might happen with Zorro. I don't know. I'm just willing to change with it. I'm willing to roll with it. So if things change for him, I mean, his bits changed, I think, maybe five or six times I've changed what bit I've used. Um, I actually just ordered him a new bit last week. So you know what? I mean, I'm just willing to try new things. And he's not having any issues with the bit. I just thought it'd be interesting to try this new bit that actually Mary Fowler has called the Harmony, the Harmony Mouth piece. Um, and it's sort of like, it's sort of like the Victory or the Arch Mouth thing. You know, it's a similar thing. And so I thought, oh, I'm going to try that one. It's a half cheek. I guess what I'm trying to say is we should all be willing to change our minds. Things change, horses change, ponies change, we change, the world changes don't we know? Um, and to be flexible and not be stuck on something because it's always been done that way. For hundreds of years, they've done it that way. So it's the only way we can ever do it. It, it just doesn't work for me. So um, I'm willing to roll with it and change my mind. Uh, I hope that you guys are also willing to do that. Otherwise, maybe you wouldn't be following me. I don't know. Um, but and do remember, this is me. This is Zorro. This is my life. I'm sharing with you what works and what didn't work. I would also love to hear something you've changed your mind about. So maybe you had a certain breast collar that you thought was the best and then you tried a different one and you actually liked it. So I would love to hear stories from you guys too. You can leave those in the comments below. So thank you so much for watching this. Bye.